I'm Meg Tudor Berry and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about the cardiac cycle. The first thing when you approach um, this graph or this image is to understand what's on your axes. So on your y-axis here you have pressure, okay? On the y-axis down here we have volume of the left ventricle. On the top um, it gives you information about whether your heart is in the filling phase or the pumping phase. Okay, and then let's look a little bit deeper into the pressure graph. Okay, the red, the red graph represents the left ventricular pressure. So this is my drawing of the heart. This is my left ventricle. The pressure in my left ventricle is represented by the red line. The pressure that's represented, represented by this black graph down here is the pressure of my left atrium. So this is the drawing of my heart. This is my left atrium. And the pressure that's represented on the top of the graph in black arrow, that's the pressure of my aorta or the aortic pressure. So the big blood vessel branching off the left ventricle is my aorta. Okay. So once we have that down, let's try and look at how the pressures in the heart are going to change um, during a full heart cycle, which is the filling and the pumping phase. And then we're going to look at how the volumes are associated with that change as well. So how I like to start is I like to start from diastole. I like to start from the filling phase. Okay, so filling phase, let's start at phase six, okay? This point is where your mitral valve opens, okay? This is where your mitral valve opens. Your mitral valve is the valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle that allows the blood to flow down into the left ventricle and fill up the left ventricle. And since we're in the filling phase, this is where the mitral valve will open. The left ventricle at this point is absolutely relaxed. It's open and it's just, it's compliant and it's filling up, okay? That means that the pressure in the left ventricle would actually be relatively low. So if you see our red line, the pressure is almost, sorry about that, the pressure is almost zero. So in our filling phase, the left ventricle of pressure is almost zero because it's easy, it's relaxed, it's compliant, and it just wants to fill up with as much blood as it can. Okay, so moving on. So we're filling, filling, filling all throughout phase six and phase seven. And then we circle back to phase one. You can see we're still filling. Then there's a slight little bump, which you can see right here. This bump simply represents the last final squeeze of the atria down into the ventricle. So the atrium does this one last final squeeze before the mitral valve has to close to push that blood down into the ventricle. And that raises the pressure in the ventricle just slightly tiny bit. So we see a little bump. Right after this bump, or right after this, let's call this the final squeeze, our mitral valve closes, okay? Right after this final squeeze, the mitral valve closes. Now, once the mitral valve is closed, blood stops to flow from the left atrium to the left ventricle. And now, it's time to push the blood out into the aorta, via the aortic valves. However, this does not happen instantly. There is a time after the mitral valve closes that the aortic valve is also closed. Blood is just spooling up in this left ventricle, okay? This is the time right before we start to push out the blood into the aorta, so right before the bumping phase, okay? During this phase, the left ventricle begins to contract. It begins to contract and develop 
pressure inside it. It contracts more and more and more to build up more and more pressure inside the left ventricle. The, and this phase, this phase is called the isovolumetric contraction phase because the volume isn't changing. The volume, the amount of blood is staying in the left ventricle, but we are having a lot of contractions in the left ventricle. So this phase with phase two, where the volume doesn't change, and we'll see that when we look at the volume graph down here, if you see the volume stays the same, but pressure significantly increases in the left ventricle. Okay, so this is our phase of isovolumetric contractions. The left ventricle does this in order to open the, this aortic valve. So the aortic valve can only be opened when left ventricular pressure is greater than aortic pressure. And in order to open that aortic valve, the left ventricle has to generate all this pressure so it can open the aortic valve, okay? And if you see that here, comparing our red graph, which is the left ventricular pressure, to the black graph, which was the aortic pressure, as soon as the red or the left ventricular pressure equals the aortic pressure, which is this point here that I've tried to mark right here, this is when the aortic valve opens. The valve opens here. And now the left ventricle can start pumping all that blood out into the aorta. So this is our active systole phase, phase three and four is where we're actively pumping the blood out, okay? Once we've pumped most of the blood out, the aortic valve closes, okay? The left ventricle has emptied itself out, how, whatever it could, and the aortic valve is now closed. Now, just like we had a phase where both the valves were closed and the ventricle was contracting, we now have a phase when both the valves are closed the left ventricle is empty and the left ventricle now needs to relax. So this phase, phase five, is also called as the left ventricular relaxation or the isovolumetric relaxation because the volume doesn't change since both the valves are closed and the left ventricle is now trying to relax. So this is our isovolumetric relaxation phase, which is phase five. Once the left ventricle has completely relaxed and the left ventricular pressure is almost down to zero, this is where the mitral valve can open again, start to fill again, and so the cycle continues. Okay, um, so Let's just take a quick look at how the volumes work with the pressures. Um, let's go back and let's start from our active filling phase. So if you see the active filling phase, which was six and seven, and we started right here. This is where the mitral valve opened. When the mitral valve opens, blood rushes into, into the left ventricle, so we're filling, 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 and this is the volume, so the volume is going up, okay? And coming to phase one, so the volume is still pretty high, it's almost up here um, in terms of ML, let's say 100 ML. And then we have this, phase of isovolumetric contraction when the left ventricle is full of blood but it is contracting so the volume doesn't change in isovolumetric contraction because it's isovolumetric right and then the aortic valve opens here at the beginning of phase three we have our active systole where the left ventricle is now emptying out into the aorta so what happens to the volume of the ventricle is the volume goes down during systole since it's pushing all the blood out, right? Then once it's done pushing all the blood out, the aortic valve closes right here. And then we have that phase of isovolumetric relaxation. So the volume is relatively low since we've already pushed the blood out, but now our left ventricle needs to relax before it can start filling again, okay? And this um, can also, information also lines up with your ECG. Remember your ECG is the electrical activity of the heart. 
it's always going to precede what kind of um, contractions you're going to see in the heart muscles. Um, so you can see that right here. This is your B wave. This is your QRS. And this is your T wave. So your P wave represents atrial depolarization. That's when the atrium is like squeezing and doing that last push to push the blood down into the ventricles. Then you see your active contractions where you see your QRS, which is where the ventricles are doing most of their work. They're really contracting to build up that pressure in order to open that aortic valve. Right? And then the ventricles start to relax and that's the T wave. Your heart sounds also line up with the cardiac cycle. Remember your S1 is when your mitral valve closes. Your S2 is when your aortic valve closes, right? S3 is a pathological sound. It can be physiological in some cases. Um, S3 is an early diastole sound. It's in the beginning of the filling phase, right? It's, it's in phase six, which is the beginning of diastole. It's an early diastole sound. Um, and we see this when the heart left ventricular chamber is, has gotten really big or in, in cases of eccentric hypertrophy. And then a late diastole sound is S4, a late diastole sound. It comes right in the end of diastole, just before systole, that's S4. This is almost always pathological, and this is seen when there is concentric hypertrophy in the heart, or the walls of the heart or the left ventricle are getting thicker. Okay, um, So hopefully this makes a little bit more sense, um, and if you have questions, put them down in the comments. I'll try to answer them as if I can. Thank you.